Kind of want to go live on Twitch right now, too. <clears throat> I should. Oh, I forgot to tune my guitar before I started the live. Major mistake, y'all. How am I? I'm good. I've been working on, just bought some new pens. That's pretty exciting. I've been working on this piece I'm doing where I'm reading this book, The Half Has Never Been Told, which is, oops, uh, a history of, uh, sorry, I'm taking my shirt off. Taking my shirt off, yeah. Uh, <laughs> a history of the development of American slavery and how it how it developed alongside of market forces um, and, and the influence that market forces played, which is the argument that Marx is making for capitalism's development uh, in Europe in at the exact same time while the Europe, I don't want to give away too much because I think this is going to be a really good piece. Um, so I don't want to like spoil it. But the European development of capitalism and the development of markets and commodity exchange was mostly like textile mills and stuff making clothing. And to make clothing, you needed cotton. And the cotton commodity was supplied in abundance by American slaves. Um, and you see a lot of very, very similar phenomena going on, uh, but, you know, the enslavers doing very, very similar things to the capitalists um, in the North and in England uh, because of the the influence that market forces have on them and the things that market forces are, are influencing them to do to their labor force are, are very similar in the development of capitalism and in the development of the specific form of slavery which existed in the United States in the 1800s, which was slavery alongside of uh, a developed market system. How do you feel about the Kashmir conflict? I haven't researched it in a while, but, you know, very bad. Obviously, the Indian government is essentially nationalist. Um, and uh, the Kashmir thing is 100% based on Islamophobia. Uh, I mean, that's why the government's implementing those policies. So, yeah. Yo, I'm going to be on the YouTube channel when you upload this. Unfortunately, when I upload these on YouTube, which I have been doing lately, by the way, if you got, if y'all miss my lives, I've been uploading them to Midwestern Marks, along with lots of other content on YouTube, um, including specific videos that aren't seen here on TikTok. Um, what was I saying? Hey, Eddie. Hey, Simon. Uh, oh, the comments don't show up when I post them on YouTube, though. Anyone want to argue with me about, uh, do I support the IRA? Yeah. Anyone want to argue with me about Hiroshima, Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Because the last time I said the atom, the, uh, um, the bombings weren't justified, uh, a bunch of people got angry just like they did this time and the comments were blowing up. And sometimes when that happens, if I'm not like an expert on an issue, I'm like, oh shoot, maybe I got something wrong. And it launches me into a whole bunch of research. Um, same thing with Israel, Palestine, like one of the first videos I made was showing that Israel, Palestine map. And I knew a lot about it, but once I got attacked by Zionists, I was like, I got to learn everything about this. So I can't be wrong. So that's what I did with Hiroshima and Nagasaki. <laughs> Everyone should watch, uh, it's Sean, I think just Sean on YouTube. He's got like, uh, this super long, like two and a half hour in-depth video that debunks like every single argument and, and talks about how there was like, you know, the same narrative that people repeat about it today is the exact narrative that the capitalist class and, and the U.S. press was pushing back then. Um, you know, that, that the Japanese, you know, it's this racist argument that because of who the Japanese people are, they wouldn't have given up. They wouldn't have surrendered, even though, you know, there's evidence that Japan, lots of evidence that Japan was getting ready to surrender and the war was essentially over. Um, and then there's evidence that the U.S. wanted to send a message to the Soviet Union. Obviously, I mean, after the atomic bombings, you would then, or the, I don't know if atomic is even the correct scientific word. I think it was nuclear. Um, but after that, you see the era of complete U.S. domination and uh, massive death and torture campaigns launched by the U.S. to fight the Soviet Union in the Cold War. You know, I think the bombings of Japan, um, who at the time was an imperialist power who was a threat to the United States, so they had incentive to, to bomb Japan as well, um, 
that more kicks off, you know, the era that we would see of U.S. supremacy more, you know, it brings a close to this era of the war, you know, where, where the countries allied, allied each other to fight against the existential threat that was Hitler and the Nazis. Um, even though the U.S. entered as late as they possibly could, probably because they had a lot of capital in Germany, um, <laughs> at, at the end of the war, you know, it was back to capitalist imperialism. We call World War II sort of like a time warp in history, right? Where like, uh, you know, where the U.S. and the Soviet Union were teamed up fighting against an enemy. Like, how does that happen? Um, <laughs> World War II. The USSR was already mobilizing troops to Manchuria for what would have been a less deadly invasion. Yup. Yup. If you read the histories from other countries and, like, the way that they tell history compared to the U.S., it pokes so many holes in the U.S. lies like that. The U.S. never tells anyone that the Soviet Union wanted to invade Manchuria or that before the Soviet Union signed a pact like to try and make peace with Germany, which most people say is Hitler and Stalin being buddy-buddy, completely false. The Soviet Union was trying to do something about Hitler much, much earlier. They were trying to intervene in Germany, um, but countries who had a lot of capital in Germany and, and who didn't mind the economic policies of Hitler, which were handing all the money to the German elite... Um, they didn't want to invade. And, and, you know, there's stories about the U.S. telling their, their air force not to bomb. Um, or, or there's not stories of it. There's evidence of it. They wouldn't. The U.S. military would not bomb places where U.S. private capital was. Um, so people would use like Henry Ford's GM plants as uh, bomb shelters to hide from the U.S. bombs. Because even though they were doing the right thing, I guess, it enter, you know, I mean, they were doing the right thing. And even though they uh, stopped the horrible force that was the Nazi army, um, it's still capitalist America, right? <laughs> it's not like all of a sudden America was like, we are now good guys who, who do everything for human rights. They were still like, oh, this war is winding down and the Soviet Union's pretty powerful and communist. Better drop a nuclear weapon on 300,000 Japanese civilians to warn them of what we're capable of. Um, yeah, it's the logic of capital. And if you're defending the bombings, you know, I've seen people who call themselves communists defending the bombings. It's like you're using the logic of capital. You're saying that because one capitalist empire um, fought a war that was just against another capitalist empire, after that war is about to end, capitalist empire A should drop nukes on the civilians of capitalist empire B. Like, no, <laughs> not at all. Civilians are not the same as their countries. <laughs> Who loves Trump? Me. A big Trump guy. What are your thoughts on the bass sock puppet on Bo Burnham special? Uh, I, I haven't seen it yet. I'm a huge Bo Burnham fan. I've been a Bo Burnham fan forever, but, uh, um, but yeah, I saw the clips. It looks super based. <laughs> I'm, I'm pumped to watch that. I love Bo Burnham. Eddie, what are your thoughts on Anne Prim? Everyone should read... Go Duhawks. <laughs> Everyone should read the book Ishmael. It's a good Anne Prim book, but, like, Anne Prim is an actual idea, is, like, something that can be, like, achieved in the real world is hilarious and ridiculous. <laughs> Why did the Great Leap Forward fail? There was a famine, and there were policy errors which Mao took credit for. You can write... Uh, read what Mao said about it and what he wrote about it. They talk about it extensively. Um... Which is hilarious, you know, considering, like, the the nonsense that's told in the U.S. about it. Like, Mao killed all these people on purpose, and then he never took credit for it. Mao was like, yeah, there was a famine, it was terrible, people died, like, I'm very, very sorry for failures, you know, that, that we made. Um, but, you know, it industrialized uh, their agricultural system, and now they don't have famines in China anymore because of things like the Great Leap Forward that helped, you know, bring them into the modern world and industrialize uh, when they had been a country induced or, or who had faced years of some of the most brutal colonization, including, you know, from the Japanese empire who, who we were talking about, who would fade away after World War II. Um, not fade away. Sorry, they were still a thing, but, <laughs> but China gained their independence after World War II. Nasser was a hero. I mean, Nasser was like, true, Nasser's was a hero. <laughs> Everyone in here likes Nasser. I, there's a story about, 
I'm pretty sure Che met, it was either Nasser or it was Sukarno in Indonesia. And he told, Che was like in their palace and he was like, this palace is too extravagant. Like you should sell some of these expensive things to be more like a communist, like be more of a revolutionary. And the advisors were like, Che, don't say that when we're in like world leaders palaces. And Che's like, whatever, I tell it how it is. Um, but uh yeah, Nasser, you know, there was a whole bunch of nationalist leaders at the time um, who were talking about nationalizing their country's resources and populism and, and anti-imperialism, anti-Western values. And a lot of times they were backed by the communists and, and socialist parties in their country, like Mossadegh in Iran. Um, and, and yeah, like critical support, but definitely prefer full-on communism or socialism. Like I wouldn't say like, Nasser's one of my all-time heroes, but I would, I do look at him as like, you know, much, much better leader than, like, anything we've ever had in the U.S. Thoughts on Ho Chi Minh? Ho Chi Minh's one of the goats. Ho Chi Minh's amazing. Ho Chi Minh is one of those people who, like, almost never did anything wrong. Do you agree with the one-child policy? I don't know enough about it. I mean, ultimately, no. I'm, I mean, like, I'm glad they lifted their one-child policy, but, like, you know, if the Chinese, you know, if the parties found, like, if we don't implement a one child policy, people are going to die in excess because of starvation and stuff. It's like, you know, you can see why they would implement it. Um, I'm sure it wasn't, you know, I haven't researched it all, but I'm sure it wasn't what the U.S. said it was. Right. I'm sure it wasn't. There's the Chinese government one day was like, -ha 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 -ha. we'll ban everyone from having more than one kid because communism. Like, I'm sure there was an uh, economic rationale behind it. Thoughts on my mom? She's pretty chill. She just left. That's why I hopped on live. But <laughs> what's your opinion on an MZT? Mao Zedong thought. I'm a fan. Where's my Mao? Oops, I almost knocked over my book. Mao Zedong thought. I'm a Mao Zedong thought person, not like a hardcore Maoist person. Mao was good, but he don't be dogmatic. <laughs> Why talk about Vosh and then not debate him when he tells you to step up? Uh, I responded to Vosh and then made my arguments. And then it seemed like he wanted to have a debate instead of a talk. Um, and after debating Benjamin politics, you know, I'll never say never. But it's very, very, very unlikely that I'll ever do a debate again. You know, conversations are based on mutual learning, right? And, and to have a conversation based on mutual learning, you need to be able to accept that you might be wrong, right? My positions may be untrue. Um, if you want to get to the place of the most truth, right? Because you want it to be based on actually listening and the sharing of ideas. Debates are like a fight, right? I'm trying to say uh, as much things as quickly as I can say them that are going to make me look smart and this person look stupid um, so that everybody's watching thinks I'm a real smart guy. I don't think that makes anyone smarter. Maybe the debate with Benjamin Politics, people learned a few things. I didn't feel like I got any smarter from it. All I felt like I learned was that he's a bad person. I don't think that would be like the same with the debate with Vosh. I'm sure it would be more productive than that. But I'd rather sit down and talk with him about the history of the DPRK, which was what our discussion was about, rather than, all right, Eddie, you get two minutes to try and own Vosh, and then he's going to try and own you. And the winner is internet champion of politics. I don't give a shit about being the internet champion of politics, okay? I care about class struggle, growing my audience um, so that I can reach more people with the message of class struggle. I don't care about winning a debate with Vosh. I don't care about winning a debate with any libertarian. And I'm not going to waste time doing debates. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm working less hours now, thankfully. But when Vosh was challenging me to a debate, I was working like 55 hours a week. And stuff would come happen. Like I would come home and, and somebody was impersonating me in Vosh's stream saying a bunch of nonsense. Like, you know, saying making me look terrible. And it wasn't me. I was at work and I get home from work and everyone's like, why were you doing that on Vosh's stream? I was like, ignore it. Like, I'm just going to continually live my life. I don't want this. <laughs> so that's kind of why. I'm, I'm down to definitely go on a show. I just don't do debates anymore. And if anyone says that I don't do debates anymore because Benjamin beat me, 
the debate that was uploaded on the voluntarist channel, the libertarians channel, I can't find it anymore. And it was loaded with comments roasting them. And then go watch the video on my channel. Nobody, nobody actually thinks Ben won. It was just stupid. Ben went on like a ramble for like 20 minutes before the debate even started talking about logic and then uh, called Thomas Jefferson or who was no, he called Thomas Edison, one of the founding fathers. Uh, <laughs> what am I doing here? This is a waste of my time. I could be talking to professors or other leftists. And instead, I'm talking to teenagers who don't think that poor people should have health care. Like, nah, not doing it anymore. <laughs> But yeah, let if anyone wants to let Vosh know, I have a Twitch now. I will go on his, I will definitely go on his uh, account. And we can argue, right? I just don't want like a structured debate where it's like everybody, you know, afterwards there's a poll. Who won? Who had the most mean jabs in the shortest amount of time? You know who's good at debating? Who was good at debating last year in, in the debates? Donald Trump. Does that mean Donald Trump is smart? Does that mean Donald Trump knows a lot about politics? Is the only person in the world who knows more about politics than Trump Ben Shapiro because Ben Shapiro could beat him in a debate? No. Debates are stupid. They don't prove anything except how quick-witted you are and how fast you can talk. <laughs> um, Eddie, you're my new inspiration. I want to become like you and educate the masses on class struggle. Heck yeah, thank you. Read about this guy. He did it a lot better than me. He can give you some better advice, but I'm, I'll be here to help you out every step of the way, hopefully. Watch Sean's video. Yes. Um, Eddie, uh, any thoughts on Nyeri and uh, Tanzania? Yeah, I haven't researched that much specifically, but I want to. Actually, my, my aunt... When she found out I was a communist, messaged me in, about Tanzania. She said, I had a friend in Tanzania who said communism's really bad. So I've been meaning to look into it more so I could hit up my aunt. But none of the books I've gotten... Well, actually, I do think The Darker Nations by Vijay Prashad talks about Nairi. But I haven't read that book in like three years now. So I should pick it back up. And my reading comprehension has really grown since uh, stuff I read years ago. Partially because I'm older and smarter and partially because I have medication for my ADD now. <laughs> I was like, wow, I'm getting so much smarter after taking this stuff for like two months. Pretty sweet. Eddie, do you think I can become a wrestler like you with only wrestling senior year of high school? That would be tough. Um, <laughs> I started wrestling in kindergarten, I think. or I mean, as soon as I was born, really, uh, I was around it. But but yeah, I mean, it happens all the time. There are people who start in high school who go on to be way, 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 way better than me. Senior year in high school is tough, but you know, it's proportional to how hard you work, right? The more labor time you put in, the more value you'll get out. <laughs> what kind of music do you listen to? Chili Peppers? Uh, I mean, I'd say probably like 50% of my uh, playlist is hip hop. And then uh, probably like 35%. And then the rest is a mixture of everything else. Like, I listen to rap probably a little more, hip-hop a little more than, than other genres, but it's pretty even other than that. Uh, a lot of rock, a lot of alternative. People sending me China's flag. <laughs> nice. Do you think imperialism have to, has to end before capitalism? They're intertwined. So, like, if we were to have a socialist revolution in the U.S., we would be moving towards an end to capitalism, and that would also be moving towards an end to imperialism, because the dominant form of imperialism right now is driven by capitalists who are located in the Western world, or Australia. What are your thoughts on Che's aggressive nuclear policy, i.e. wanting to nuke America? <laughs> That's a myth. He, did, he didn't want to do that, and Che was not like a... He believed in uniting Latin America against the West, so he kind of believed in like a Trotskyist theory of permanent revolution or like sort of like a Pan-Africanist theory of uniting Latin America against imperialism, but he never supported nuking the U.S. He just thought Cuba should have nukes uh, because if you have nukes, the U.S. won't mess with you. Like, that's why the DPRK, they're under an embargo and stuff, but after the U.S. killed 20% of their civilians, they haven't gone in and invaded the DPRK anymore because the DPRK has nukes and... No matter how much power you have, nukes can still cause a whole lot of damage. So there's no... And Gaddafi gave up his nuclear program right before the U.S. went up and went in and killed him. So 
You can definitely see why third world leaders would want their countries to have nukes. And as someone living in the U.S., I don't blame them. Uh, I would want defense from this country as well. What is your opinion on a meteor striking Earth and restarting our society as a whole? <laughs> That's a good question. I've thought about that before because I think about it with climate change. Like, what's going to happen if we don't get rid of capitalism and, and capitalism really can't, can't stop the climate crisis from getting insanely bad? Um, we'll see. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to keep struggling for socialism. <laughs> it's not... I'm going to teach my kids, like, survival skills in case they end up in some kind of post-apocalyptic capitalism, every man for himself world. In case they end up in fallout. Why didn't you debate Vosh? He invited you to debate. I explained that earlier. I just don't do debates. I'll talk to Vosh. Um, I went on, a like, a 15-minute rant about debates earlier. <laughs> Are there any socialist countries left? Yes. Uh, you could call Bolivia, Venezuela, Cuba, uh, Vietnam, China, and the DPRK uh, off the top of my head. Um, Nicaragua. And these are countries with socialist governments, right? Not saying they have a socialist mode of production. They have a capitalist mode of production, but socialist governments attempting to transition to socialism, um, which in many ways creates higher standard of living for their people than they would be otherwise. Hassan collab when? I don't know if I have that kind of clout. Like, we're getting up there, y'all. Y'all have gotten me so many followers that it's insane. It blows my mind. It gives me anxiety attacks every time I look at how many people are watching me talk. But, um, uh, thank you all for all the followers. And eventually, eventually, I will be on Hassan Piker's show. I don't actually watch it, but... Uh, I've heard it's great, and I know a lot of, like, my closest friends watch it, so. Talk to Hassan about Xinjiang? Okay. Xinjiang? Do you ever get stuff from Amazon? I try not to anymore, but I I have in, like, the last year, for sure. Thoughts on Jeremy Corbyn? Based. Basically the Bernie of UK, but not great, but... Eddie, why is Karl Marx writing in lowercase? What? All of it? No, it's isn't. It? Did I not notice that the whole time? No, it's not. You tricked me. Dang it. <laughs> All right, everyone. I'm peacing out. You can find this live on our YouTube channel, Midwestern Marks. Uh, Patreon.com slash Midwestern Marks. Midwestern Marks.com. Midwestern Marks. All right. See you, everyone. Solidarity. Ooh, sticker.